Welcome to Kingdom Mirrors TV. On this channel, we post edifying content for your spirit and daily living. Kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your post notification to get notified each time we post. Thank you, stay blessed, and enjoy this video. This is the reason why most times I do not like to talk about my encounters. Do you know why? I do not want you to build your conviction based on those encounters alone. I want you to build your conviction based on these foundational encounters that I want to show you. The average believer today who is exposed to the apostolic and prophetic ministry, for instance, will feel bad feel insulted and even feel unspiritual if they are not seeing visions it's almost like a stigma to your spiritual experience how long have you been born again 10 years do you see do you hear well not exactly i hear the holy ghost sometimes well, ah, I say, my goodness my god that means something is wrong with your christian experience so in a bid in a bid to honor um, what you call your pursuit for spiritual growth there is such an itch and an appetite for any extra anything that just just let me hear a sound let me see a being demonic or spiritual let me just see something and hear something and because of that hunger on one hand God intends to give you these encounters but the reason why for many of us God does not bring those encounters is because you have not been taught how to decipher encounters to profit from them. It's not because your spiritual level has not reached there. God just wants to help you. He's withdrawing these encounters is an act of mercy to help you stay true to doctrine. Are we blessed? This is how the Lord taught me. The apostolic and the prophetic ministry will expose you to various encounters you will not believe how many things i've seen standing here and preaching if i did not have this understanding that i'm teaching you you will never almost be able to settle down and teach a correct sermon every sermon will be turned to revelation because as for sight you will keep seeing the discipline to be able to turn down these things and focus on doctrine to mentor believers many sincere people do not have that every time their eyes see something there is an urge to say what they are seeing and it becomes a distraction to mentoring believers so you see that services become full of just revelatory processes not revelation of scripture prophetic revelations and there is a place for that don't get me wrong except that after a while you see that believers don't mature again and then the body of christ also has been baited into that state of that spiritual state when you come and sit down and the truth is being taught that interest to endure doctrine is not there again apostle this is 30 minutes you've not seen anything so pastors and ministers are under pressure if you want membership be ready to see something or say something i don't care what you know if you are not seeing and you are not saying anything be ready for empty pews we must balance this remember that i love the body of christ and remember that everything i say is to the intents that we become matured are we together now The average man of God is under severe pressure right now. Pressure for the prophetic, pressure to be able to reveal something. If you go to pray with someone and you bring Bible verses and you tell the person, Acts chapter this verse, this says this. You, you, you can even see the disconnect. We wasted our time, prepared honorarium, cooked food to come and receive this rubbish. There, you see that there, there is something wrong. While you are laughing, I want you to pay attention you may not see the effect now let it continue down the line that's why people lie even with the prophetic because there has to be a way that pressure makes people lie we say things god is not saying body of christ hear me this is not just a message for koinonia this is a message for the body of Christ. When a man of God can teach scripture 
and help you understand the ways of God. He's under pressure because he looks like a fatal failure as far as ministry is concerned. I don't know what happened to your eyes and your ears, but we're not interested. And very clearly, the person becomes frustrated. And as a result, he will say, you know what? If this is the formula for relevance, let me go for my fasting. And the devil says, exactly. This is what I wanted. He waits for you. And once you are done with your fasting and all of that, he now shows up and begins to introduce you into all kinds of things. You find out that the more you see, the more you are deviating from God's patterns. Many people did not start the way they are now. Let me tell you, I submit to you, it's difficult to live in the realm of encounters and still be sound and detailed. This is what I want to teach you now. There is a roadmap that if you follow, if you follow, you will never mislead the body through encounters. Your encounters will profit you and then profit the body. If you are operating in the prophetic here, please listen to me. Because this, is, this particularly will help you. Are we blessed? So the Bible lets us know that encounters are very important. They create conviction. Whether encounters just with the word as you're studying or visionary encounters. When God was giving me a revelation about this ministry, I had supernatural encounters. I've shared some of them with you. My life is full of all kinds of encounters at different junctions of my life. You would hear fathers like Bishop David Oedipo share their encounters. They would tell you he was in an 18-hour vision. Is that true? And he saw this and that and explain it. Several other men of God will tell you there are others who were led by angels into realms and they were taught certain dimensions of the healing ministry. There are people who had all kinds of encounters. Some of them have profited the body of Christ today. Now, let me begin to teach you how to balance encounters. Rule number one, no encounter is equal to doctrine. No encounter, no visionary encounter automatically becomes a doctrine. Do not make doctrine out of encounters. Do not make doctrine out of encounters. Doctrines, listen, encounters are, they, they are classified in a category of dealings called personalized dealings. Personalized dealings means that it's God's way of working with you to help you to be effective. It will profit the body of Christ, but do not turn encounters into doctrines. So, if let me let me just leave that issue so that we don't create trouble in the body of Christ but it's very important for you to know this rule number one do not suddenly turn an encounter into a doctrine the doctrines of scripture are already stated it is true listen carefully there is a reason why these doctrines were put here in scripture and if we violate them do you know what will happen we will start creating pseudo christian experiences that are not exactly god rule number one do not create doctrines out of encounters number two every encounter must submit to scripture every encounter you must vet your encounters from the lens of scripture. Every encounter, no matter, even if it's Jesus you see, any encounter must submit to scripture. No matter how extraordinary that encounter is. Number three, you interpret encounters, listen carefully, or let me put it this way, scripture becomes your lens for interpreting encounters do not interpret encounters with feelings you must go to scripture for instance 
two of us can have a vision i can see a chain in the spirit you can see a chain too it means different things to both of us we cannot create i'm saying this with every sense of respect and responsibility to the body of christ there are people who god has helped to bless the body in whatever capacity and we honor them but there is a big mistake do not say every time you see chains it means bondage it is not true you have to go to the bible to get your explanation not your mind a chain does not always mean bondage nakedness does not always mean shame so by the time i put all these things if you see a chain bondage if you see nakedness shame nakedness can mean intimacy it can mean you are growing with the holy ghost the holy spirit and scripture has to interpret that are we together now most people just come up with their ideas about encounters this is what i saw this is what i saw i think this should be it and we ship it down and mislead people that includes dreams look up please when you wake up from a dream you don't just go and buy a book to interpret it except if that book submits to scripture are we together now many belief systems that have authorized satan to destroy us today came from these dreams and encounters take note of these rules one remember that no encounter in itself becomes a doctrine no the doctrine of scripture is written do you know the thing about doctrines doctrines should be taught and explained not created the doctrines that make for the maturity of the believer is already there you have to understand this every other thing supports our growth it does not create the basis for it the bible listen carefully the bible has already set the manual for the growth of the believer there's no need to invent another route for spiritual growth jesus the early church the patriarchs have set enough precedence there is no level of spiritual growth you want to attain onto that scripture has not provided the roadmap for so doctrines must submit to scripture and your interpretation must come from scripture not your ideas scripture hallelujah your interpretation must come from scripture now listen very carefully the holy ghost when he began to teach me about encounters he taught me four cardinal encounters listen carefully don't assume you understand what i'm saying there are four foundational encounters and the holy spirit taught me that these are the major encounters every believer must have if you do not have these four encounters no matter which other encounter you have there will be trouble i'm going to run through them because of time why am i teaching you this so that when you begin to have extraordinary encounters because you see soaking yourself in this glory is exposing you to the realm of the spirit and you must be guided by scripture so that we do not have all kinds of error that come and then you connect the error to koinonia you say it was when i came for koinonia i fell under the anointing and i was in the realm of the spirit this is what i saw this is how i came and you see the way the devil does it is he will take advantage of this atmosphere to mislead you when you now tell someone it was in koinonia that thing started he will usually believe you and respect you but up you go into the realm of error Are you blessed i have kept these four encounters and i pay attention to them my entire life these are the encounters that have become pillars that guide me as i approach the realm of the spirit and i'm introducing you to this and this is also a message to the body of christ these encounters that i'm about to list and maybe briefly just touch they supersede any other encounter listen if these are the only encounters you have in your life and you never have any vision again in your life you will still fulfill your god-given mandate the foundational encounters that every child of god or everyone on earth should have are you ready for this 
Have you understood everything I've said so far? Yes. I want you to appreciate these things that we teach because number one, they are consistent with scripture, but number two, some of these trainings came from a standpoint of pain, blood, and tears. I'm praying that you will place value on them. Some of you, what I'm saying, you may not need it now until you keep rising. One day you will see and thank the Lord that you got this doctrinal balance even as you approach the realm of the spirit. Some of you, as I share this with you, the Lord will use it to give you hope and give you confidence as far as your Christian experience is concerned. Four encounters the Lord taught me. Number one, the first encounter that every believer must have is encounter with Jesus the son of the living God please write it down it does not mean a visionary picture of Jesus you can have an encounter through scripture an encounter through the word of salvation with Jesus the son of the living God please write it down just be patient and write it down the Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. He says that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Can I tell you this? No matter how many visions you see in your life, if you do not have an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God, you are going to hell. It's as simple as that. Encounters don't redeem people. It is Jesus that redeems people encounters don't give people eternal life it is the son of the living god so if you have 30 encounters in your life and jesus is not part of them you are on your way to hell ladies and gentlemen please hear me this is this these are safety nets an encounter with the son of the living god the first encounter that the hunger of any living being would push him to in that order is an encounter with the son of the living God it is a foundational encounter you must have you must pray that everybody around your life your church they must have that encounter what does it mean to encounter the son of the living God that the Holy Spirit through the ministry of the gospel will furnish the reality of the love of jesus the love of the father to your heart and bring you to a point where you accept the truth of his substitutionary sacrifice are we together now to the end that you receive of his life eternal life the bible says it's an encounter this is the record that God hath given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He says, whosoever hath the son hath life eternal. Everybody say encounter with the son. There are many people today, I'm sorry to use this expression, but even people in ministry, who operate the prophetic but have not had this encounter i hope you know that yes there are people who came just from tradition and then they came into the city and just continued what they were doing an encounter with the son of god i know people who started having visions and had prophetic inclinations even before they got born again yes that is a possibility your very wiring your very prophetic wiring can tilt you to the prophetic and people can begin to recognize it some of you know people like that in your villages they are sincere people they don't practice any evil that you know but we call them seers they have eyes that see they can tell you be careful and what they say will happen exactly so can i tell you those same people need encounters the encounter with the son of the living god this is doctrine if you do not have an encounter with the son of the living God you are in trouble why because no other encounter sustains the power to save you and translate you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's dear son my brothers and my sisters no matter how long you fast no matter how long you pray no matter how many realms and dimensions you step into even if you go to heaven even if it's the true heaven 
and you come down if you don't have an encounter with the son of the living god you are going to hell it's as simple and honest as that are we learning the first foundational encounter that every believer must have encounter with the son of god number two very quickly the second encounter is an encounter with the person and the ministry the ministry of the holy spirit in that order second only to your encounter with the son of the living god you need an encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit please look up the ministry of the holy spirit is not for pastors the ministry of the holy spirit is not for preachers it's not just for some supernatural people the ministry of the holy spirit is for everybody jesus told us that he is the only shorty to have been guided he says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth satan can use truth to destroy it's not only a lie that destroys the truth can destroy too Many believers have not been introduced into this encounter with the person of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> An encounter with the Holy Spirit is more than praying in tongues. No. Just because hands were laid on you and you are praying in tongues, when we say, have you met the Holy Ghost, you say yes. No. 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 Just because you have eaten someone's food does not mean you've met the person. No, you benefited from the person. But have you met the person? Can I tell you this? Especially for those of us who are called into ministry. All those who have been mightily used by God from scripture and modern history and even today will tell you they can trace their exploits to this one encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We've dealt with that here so I don't want to go so deep into that. The Holy Spirit realized the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is not an archangel. The Holy Spirit is not one of those winds flowing in the realm of the Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit is God. You can encounter his office. When you are encountering the Son, he plays a role there. But you can en encounter the person of the Holy Spirit. It is true. The benefit of that encounter is guidance. I've taught you. The benefit of that encounter is empowerment, direction, the Holy Spirit. So that whatever you see and whatever you hear, you can trust him to guide you. He will tell you what is from him and he will tell you what is not from him. You do not use the purity of what you are seeing to know whether it's from God or not. No, it is the voice of the Holy Spirit that will help you decipher. You will see many good things in your Christian experience, but they are not from God. It's not in this kingdom, it's, we don't deal with good or bad. We deal with whether the Holy Spirit is involved or not. No matter how good it is, if the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of the Father, is not involved in that process, stay away. No matter how good. Encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit koinonia is god helping you tonight so there are times while i'm having several visions maybe in the miracle service and all of that you see it happen i can have the vision say of a coffin and i can see death now i don't just announce the holy spirit listen all of those visions will pass through the sieve of these foundational visions these foundational encounters are we together now any vision i see that does not glorify the sun i will never announce it i will throw it like that the same way you are passing the street and you see a madman you just know that somebody was there and you passed you are focusing on what you are looking at there are many other things you will see other than what god wants you to see but you must first ask yourself a question this is why i'm teaching you this because I have had this encounter with the Son of God. Every other encounter I have, I must ask myself, does this encounter reveal Jesus? And does this bring him glory? Either in my life or the life of those I'm about to minister to. If it does not capture the revelation of the Son and the glorification of the same, no matter how spectacular the vision is, I will dump it. 
Is someone learning now? An encounter with the sun gives balance to every other encounter you have. If it does not reveal the sun and does not bring him glory, throw it out of your life. Number two, an encounter with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives you direction. The Holy Spirit gives you guidance. Let me tell you this. I wish we had the time. I hope you know that in your Christian experience, you will get to a point where you will meet a lot of people with influences that produce results. But if you have a rich ministry with the Holy Spirit, you will be able to know that this is not the Holy Spirit. And you may even be able to help them. Listen, in my life and in ministry, I've had the opportunity of praying for people, especially kids. Kids that they brought that were demonstrating superhuman abilities. It was because of this relationship with the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Remember in the book of Acts? The experience of Paul? Remember? The little girl who was using divination. Many of us now would have entered partnership with her in ministry. Many of us! You can't allow that opportunity to pass you by like that. That is a rich opportunity for strategic alliance. She even volunteered. This is a great man. I mean, what else would you... For someone to announce you using her credibility... But he looked and looked and said, no, something is wrong. The Holy Spirit. I have met people in my life. This is a true story. I have met people in my life who called my name and prophesied to me. And they were not Christians. They've not given their life to Christ. Not, it's not something hidden. I remember one time, I think it was Niger. I was going to have a meeting. I think it was Niger Republic or so. And we were going, we, went, we flew to Lagos and then went by road. Somewhere when we were doing just the immigration formalities. I remember, some of you go to the market and you see these people. They are there. They can call your name with uncanny accuracy. If you do not have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, your search for visionary solutions will lead you to delusion. Joshua Selman, ah, who are you? Well, I'm not exactly an evil person, but I'm not by everybody's visionary experience is powered from a source. What source powers that vision? It is not the correctness of the information, it's the source that powers it. And listen, you have no right to just look at people and begin to judge them if your own relationship with the Holy Spirit is not alive. By what parameter you will become judgmental and you will mix both good and bad and call everybody fake. It is on the strength of your relationship with the Holy Spirit you can decipher. Are we learning now? Yes, sir. There are times that I've shaken hands with people and I look at them sincerely and you see them manifesting a semblance of the anointing and I know this is not God. Sometimes I make one statement and they are delivered there and they themselves will be surprised. I know a woman one time that I prayed for, this woman would have visionary encounters. People would come to her house. She can pray for you. She said she had testimonies of people who were barren, who God opened their wombs. But she knew something was wrong because when she lies to sleep, she will be tormented by evil spirits. Yet this gift supposedly was working in her life. The day I met her, she came. Thank God she was a sincere woman. She was honest and she told me. She said this is a gift that has been working in her life. People have sowed into her life. She's had results. But I knew this was not the spirit. Now, it didn't mean the woman was bad. I have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. I know how he operates. I know what is not him. And I held the woman's hands and I prayed for her. Why did they flog the apostles in the Bible? Because they tampered with somebody's way of getting money. There were some evil men who saw that young girl and when they saw her instead of them to lead her to someone who will help her they decided to cash in on the opportunity while those demons continue to torment that girl i love the apostles when they came they didn't have time for rubbish they rebuked that spirit even though they flogged them later on but at least jesus was glorified are we together encounter with the Holy Spirit listen to me 
until you cultivate your relationship with the Holy Spirit you will never step into the realm of discernment and sensitivity and in this end time brothers and sisters you need sensitivity there are many things that look like God that is not God there are many things that look like God speaking to your destiny I can prophesy favor upon you now and say in the name of Jesus Christ be favored you will say amen the moment you say amen you will see a text in your phone after service and it's 419 people they will tell you give us your account number give us something and um, um, there is some money that you want somewhere you have you seen those kinds of people and the devil will now connect it to the prophetic word of favor and that begins your destruction for instance but when you know the Holy Ghost, you know how he operates. You know that this is not God. And you dump that nonsense out of your phone and give yourself rest. There are times you sit down and you are doing, you are talking with people, you are about to do a business with them. They are so articulate, they are intelligent, everything is right. But here comes the Holy Ghost again. It tells you, no, no. I know I told you that I will bless you next week, but this is not it. The blessing is coming but this is not it and there are times that many things will not look like it but it is it it is still him that will tell you you see that is the strange thing with the Holy Spirit you will see a job that does not look like it and the Holy Ghost will tell you take that job 50,000 when I am waiting for one that will give me 250 and the Holy Ghost will tell you take it but this does not look like the vision I saw because you have an encounter with the Holy Ghost. He will say, take it. Whilst you are in that job, your uncle will come and it is through that job you will be sent for a training and you will meet your destiny helper and within five months you will leave that job into where God showed you now. Had you not heard God, you will not even know how to navigate to that realm. Are we learning now? Number three, very quickly encounter with the word of God it would never tire me to teach you this you have to learn it the third foundational encounter you must have superior to all other encounters is an encounter with the word of God please look at me if you are not sound in scripture you see deception will be the devil will take you for a ride you have to be sound in scripture encounter with the word of god what is the word of god the word of god is a compendium